Nano is the science of understanding why things behave differently when they get very, very small. I think the main thing to realize is that materials, when you make them really small, can act very differently than how they act to the things that we see every day. We tend to, I guess, perceive systems at a level in which we can see. And now technology is a manipulation of the system at a much smaller level that can have a real profound impact on how that system behaves in how we experience it. These images show nanoscale materials. They can't be seen by the naked eye. They're studied for use in the field of nanotechnology and at West Virginia University and other universities across the state. It's a hot area of research. The average person should know about nanoscience because there's very little in the future that is not going to touch them that won't involve nano in some way. So everything from your electronics to medicine to the environment, you're going to be called upon to make decisions and you really need to understand what nano is and how it affects your life. Deandra Leslie Pilecki is the head of an initiative known as WV Nano, a program that focuses on stimulating research in nanoscience. More than 40 researchers throughout the state, many here at West Virginia University, are working with WV Nano, conducting research in everything from electronics to medicine. Leslie Pilecki became the group's first full-time permanent director in November 2010. It's a really nice group of people who have come together. I think the thing that impressed me most about WV Nano is the quality of the people. West Virginia University just has some really good researchers especially the new people who have come in the last couple years. And these are people who have great ideas, they're inspired, they're energetic, and it is just really a pleasure to work with them. So when discussing nanoparticles or nanotechnology, how small are we talking about? When we're talking nano, we're talking really small. So a meter is about a yard. We're talking about a billionth of a meter. We're talking about things that are very small. We're talking about something that's smaller than a cell, something that's smaller than a hair. This is an image of a carbon nanofiber. Since this and other materials called nanoparticles can't be seen by the eye, researchers need specific tools to study them. And this is one of those devices. It's called a high-resolution transmission electron microscope, and researchers can use it to study nanomaterials. If you think about the wavelength of light, you can't see a nanometer because light waves are actually bigger than a nanometer. So in order to see something that's nano, you have to use a different probe. So anytime you see something, what's happening is the light waves are coming in and they hit you and they reflect back. And what you're seeing are the waves that are reflected back. If you're looking at an object that's smaller than the light wave, you can't see it. So instead of using light waves, um, what we use is actually electrons. WVU professor Michael Holcomb uses an electron microscope. She studies magnetics and is using materials called nanofilms, a form of nanotechnology, in her research. Holcomb is studying how to improve energy efficiency in computers. Current computing right now is all focused on having electricity uh, constantly flowing through computers. Uh, and that eats up a lot of electricity. If you could instead have a system where you didn't need electricity to always flow through it, uh, and that's what non-volatile means, um, then you could really reduce the amount of electricity that computers use or that are used through batteries. And so magnetism is one of the ways that people are thinking about doing this. Holcomb says West Virginia University puts a sharp focus on magnetism and technology, which sets it apart from other schools. I love working in nanotechnology. This is a, a great environment. I have a lot of colleagues that I can talk to. Um, and, and also, it's just a very friendly place to be. But the world of nanotechnology extends beyond magnetism and physics. David Klinke's research is in the field of cell biology and immunology. He's interested in finding out more about how nanoscience can help researchers identify cancer cells and cure cancer. So I didn't know a lot about nanotechnology when I was a student. My current interest in nanotechnology wasn't necessarily driven by uh, nanotechnology by itself, but it's driven by the question. And the question is trying to understand this interaction between cancer cells and cells of the immune system. And as we're discovering, it is this uh, nanoscale packet of information that's being transferred back and forth. Other nano research at WVU is being applied to advancements in environmental protection, public security, and energy.
Deandra Leslie Pilecki knows that nanoscience can be a hard concept to wrap your head around, but she says it's something everyone should know about. You know, one of the disadvantages of working in this really exciting field is that we all take it sort of for granted, right? So I was actually at a conference, and it was we were in this banquet lunch, and there were a couple people there, and they were showing each other some transmission electron micrographs of some nanoparticles. And yet we're just talking about them, and, and the waitress stopped and said, what, what is that? Because to her, you know, it could have been a basketball. And so we were explaining to her what it was, and she was just floored. She said, there's no way, how could you see it? If it's too small to see, how can you show me a picture of it? And that really made me sort of step back and think and say, you know, I take all this for granted, and every now and then you really need to step back and say, wow, what we're doing is just really, really neat. And scientists around the country are taking note of nanotechnology at WVU. WV Nano's Distinguished Colloquium Series is attracting nationally recognized leaders as guest speakers in nanomaterials education and research. For West Virginia Public Broadcasting, I'm Beneduccio in Morgantown. Support for the Mountain State Science Series comes from the National Science Foundation's experimental program to stimulate competitive research, investing in West Virginia's future by building infrastructure for scientific research. On the web at wvresearch.org.